Cheshire City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. So, queuing the next PowerPoint slide, we've got uh, a speaker, a very special speaker that was arranged by some special people here. And we are going to have a meditation session. So I know that people here are very good at sitting down and doing nothing. So you're all pre-qualified for a meditation session, okay? <laughs> so. Uh, Quickly, this is Nikki. Come up, Nikki, and just quickly introduce Dr. N Nina for us. Hello. <laughs> okay. okay, today we have a special person, Dr. Nina. Uh, I would like to invite her because she come over today just special for you guys here. Right. And she will introduce herself about what she got to do, what she got to give you today. So, uh, and I, I was lucky enough to, well, sit with them while they're having breakfast. They're, these people are very charming people. They're great advertisements for meditation and they're very personable. And Dr. Nina is usually in Chiang Mai, but, but through the good grace of Buddha, she had just happened to be in Bangkok and she had one spare, few spare hours. So she came down specially from Bangkok, well, from Chiang Mai via Bangkok to give this talk. So, Dr. Nina. Thank you so much, Ren, and thank you so much, Pinaki and Alex and all of you. Can you hear me okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Hello and sawadee Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? <laughs> Everyone's doing okay? You're all smiling very beautifully. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm very honored and humbled to be here today to share with you a little bit about what has brought me peace and balance in my life. Um, I'll first tell you a little bit about myself. Why is this strange person from Chiang Mai? Oh, that's right. It's okay. As uh, I'll let you. F oh, okay. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> well, we learn to go with the flow in life. Uh, so again, my name is Nina. I was born in Alabama, in America. I came here four months ago, and um, yes, why am I speaking to you today? So I am professionally a psychiatrist, a child and adult psychiatrist, and of course. Um, I'm Asian, right? <laughs> so uh, all Asians should be doctors, right? Well, the culture that I was raised in, anyway. And uh, so I kind of was, I grew up with this mindset that I should either maybe be a doctor. Uh, my father is a physician, and it seemed like a very rewarding field. You can help people and um, give back to the world. So I kind of went along my path in life with this goal in mind. And when I got to college, things got a little more challenging. I began to actually get very undisciplined and I lost focus in life. When things got more challenging in my life and push got to shove, why was I doing what I was doing? It somehow wasn't internally motivated, but the motivation was from outside. So interestingly enough, I actually dropped out of school. I completely failed. And I was just working, but very luckily I have my very good friend who is also my mother, just as Alex has his mom as his virtuous friend. And since I was young, we were raised in the Eastern wisdom traditions. And my mother would have us meditate a little bit every day and chant a little bit every day. And so I was kind of used to meditation. I was open to it, right? And during this time in my life, she said, okay, Nina, well, you need to go to Thailand and meditate for two weeks. <laughs> So I said, okay, well, free trip to Thailand. I'm definitely going. <laughs> so I went there. 
and just like all of you today, I did not know what to expect. I had didn't know what I was getting into. I just showed up for the program, right? Just like you came today and every Wednesday to support each other, to help make each other's world and the community at large a better place and welcoming to the world that we are all one family. I love the theme here, by the way. Um, and so during the program, we meditated every day. We would listen to talks from monks about the purpose of life, eat mindfully, and just practice being present with whatever was going on. And at the end, I was very clear. I just remember thinking like, I need to do something to help the world, and the best way that I can do that is to be a doctor. So with the inner strength that I gained and the clarity and from the power of the meditation practice, I was able to accomplish my goal. And if it wasn't for meditation, I would not have finished school. I do not know where I would be today. Um, and so I am very passionate about first finding the peace within myself because I cannot share to anyone what I do not have and then maybe helping the one person in front of me who might benefit from it. So thank you for inviting me today. I'll figure out how this works by the end of this. <laughs> or maybe Red will help me again. <laughs> we'll try. Or I can just do it by, by heart. <laughs> so luckily in my life, um, oh, OK, sure, sure, thank you. Um, my mother, she founded a nonprofit organization in Alabama called the Meditation Center of Alabama. And during my studies in medical school and undergrad, we, I volunteered here for about a decade. So it was very rewarding. I saw people from all walks of life, a lot of people who had just gone through a divorce or had received a um, medical diagnosis that was life-threatening realizing that they needed to find a center of peace and calm in their life. And they all came and they all found that and many of them even became meditation teachers and great lights for the world. So through my volunteering efforts, I learned that this practice of inner peace, breathing, coming back to the present moment is a universal skill that can benefit everyone from all walks of life, no matter what you look like, what you might call yourself. We are truly one family. We'll go to the next slide. <laughs> so uh, with a show of hands, how many people have some stress in their life? OK, you've got a hand from Ren. Who has a lot of stress in their life? <laughs> I'll raise my hand, too. OK, <laughs> thank you for being honest. <laughs> it's normal. And actually, there's nothing wrong with the stress response. Actually, it's very adaptive. The stress response is actually the sympathetic nervous system telling you that you need to overcome a challenge. OK, sorry. Such as the clicker. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, it can be very good, actually, because if you didn't feel like you know a little excited or you needed to get up and do something, you might not do anything. You might just be at home and chill. Um, we can go back to the next slide for a moment. Thank you for uh, working the slideshow for me. So something called you stress, right? It's productive. We have a goal. We are motivated to help others, to come to the expat club, to help other people, to find speakers. There might be some stress involved, but at the end of the day, you get to change someone's life and make the world a better place. This is worth it. And we have the energy, we're energized to do that. Burnout is what happens when we are too stressed and we don't take care of ourselves. We are proverbially emptying the water in the cup. We're pouring it out until it's empty. And we're not taking the time to fill it back up. So you essentially get burned out. And it comes with feelings of like numbness, demotivation. Maybe before you were like so ready to go to your new job and to help the team. And you're really creative. But now you find yourself just dragging your feet. You just don't want to go to work. You get there, and it's just an endless to-do list. And some people develop maybe depression or anxiety, things like that. So we're trying to, we'll go to the next slide, um, learn how can we be more balanced to fill this cup of water up so that we're giving from, we're, it's overflowing with peace and happiness. So what you're doing is actually energizing you. It's bringing you positive energy, and you're just sharing that with others, coming from a place of fulfillment rather than like an empty well. So balance. 
and we'll go to the next slide. And today I would like to share with you one tool in the toolkit of being happy in life and balanced, and that is the practice of being in the present moment. Uh, as Ren astutely said, you all already know how to be present and enjoy the moment and be chill. <laughs> I think you're very relaxed here. You have the beautiful beach. It helps you to be sabai, sabai, sabai. Um, I hope, I guess, yeah, it's great. Usually there's a lot of Thai people in the audience and my Thai is not the best, so I think you all understand me well. <laughs> but yeah, so mindfulness meditation. Um, we can go to the next slide. An adjunct tool to help you to stay balanced in your life, to realize when you might be overextending yourself. You're getting to feel a little stressed, just take a deep breath, one deep mindful breath. Come back to yourself, come back to center. At any point in time, and we can also do this mental like exercise to let go. It's like every day you take a shower, right? Everyone take a shower. I, I took a shower yesterday, disclaimer. <laughs> and so how about our mind? You know, We actually accumulate like dirt and dust and negative thoughts and we are never quite taught how to clean our minds. Like we go to school, we learn, we analyze. They teach you how to work the machine, but they don't show you where the off button is. And sometimes you're going so fast in your life, you are so busy that you, you can't even see the scenery. You can't appreciate the happiness that's already there around you because we are going so fast. And then sometimes we, we get into an accident, just like I did, right? And back when I had to re-examine my life and find out why am I here. So the capacity to breathe and slow down the speed, take a step back, is life-changing because it develops clarity in your life. When you can see clearly, you can make good decisions for yourself, you can understand yourself and the world around you, and when you can make better decisions, you are effectively a better mother, a better father, grandfather, a better Christian, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, it doesn't matter. It's the language of peace and peace is universal. Okay, so we have now, this is the stress response <laughs> that I'll talk about briefly. So again, it's a good thing, actually. So the sympathetic nervous system, or the fight or flight system, it evolved back when we were hunters and gatherers. And for example, when a saber-toothed tiger is coming out to get you, you really want your heart rate to pick up. <laughs> you want blood to pump to your organs so you can get up, run away, and save your life. But what happens is that these days, there's usually not a saber-toothed tiger coming after me, but the same stress response, releasing cortisol, inflammatory markers in your body, is being induced by Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, some political post, the pandemic, the world economic situation, and gone unchecked. This chronic stress response can actually cause health problems, so not just feeling burned out in your mind, but it can affect your physical well-being as well. So Dr. Herbert Benson from Harvard University talks about the relaxation response. When we breathe and we relax, scientifically documented, blood pressure drops, heart rate decreases, you feel better, you feel the peacefulness that is already there within you. Actually, already everything you need to be happy is already within you. That little boy, little girl, that small child within you, it's always there. But it's just like a light bulb. Sometimes in life it gets a little dusty. So we have to just clean, wash it, let it go of the things that are no longer serving you. And the light that never went away, that is always and will always be there within you, will shine again. And you'll feel the happiness. And even though the world may be exactly the same on the outside, but after calming yourself down, meditating, you open your eyes and you feel like, huh, ah, it wasn't really a problem anymore. The world is it's okay. It w I was just worrying too much, let you, having let go of the thought. So we can go to the next slide. So mindfulness. This is an awareness. Zen is the godfather of mindfulness. Basically, what is mindfulness? Again, simple tool, relaxing, being in the present moment. Non-judgingly and non-reactively in the present moment. So what does that mean? Whether you have any thoughts right now, or you don't have any thoughts, whether you have any feelings, or no feelings in particular, just being okay with whatever's going on right now, completely accepting of whatever is going on 
in the inner and outer world right now. It's as if in this moment, there was absolutely nothing that you needed to change in your life. Everything was just perfect the way it is. It's enough. And when we feel that we are content that it is perfect the way it is, then it really is perfect, right? Because you're not desiring a different reality. So we have our thoughts, and we are always having a push or pull in our thoughts, this desire. We either want something or we don't want something. So there's like a constant baseline tension inside of your mind. And when we come to meditate and we come to relax and take a step back, that tension just drops. You can feel the peacefulness and easiness that already exists. And we can go to the next slide. <laughs> well, well, this is an awareness one, test. If you can help me. Okay. How many passes, how many passes does the team in white make? Okay, pause. The answer oh. is 13. <laughs> you can pause it. It's okay. Don't worry. Uh, did anyone get 13? <laughs> oh, yes. Great job. <laughs> anyone get another number? <laughs> okay, well, great job to you, too. <laughs> uh, how many passes did the white team make? So, okay, I'll tell you if we can go back to the other slide. We'll watch it one more time. So, it's basically an awareness test, and you want to see. How many times the ball passes? This is an awareness test. We'll just let the whole thing play and I'll just talk. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! The answer is 13. Just let it go. I don't... Okay. But... Did you see the moonwalking bear? Anyone see it? Let's look again. Go! Oh, really? <laughs> it's a commercial. <laughs> So it's easy to miss something we're not looking for. Or sometimes when we've got so many thoughts in our mind and we're trying to focus on the present moment to be with your loved ones, to be with the expat community, to enjoy the scenery. Sometimes we have so many things going on and we're focused on what's going on in our internal world. So it takes us away from the beauty that's already there around us. So, but actually we are going to use this quality of the mind Actually, you can only think of one thing at a time. <laughs> this is very interesting. Even people who like multitask, they're actually switching from thought to thought very quickly. And some people are very good at it, but it does divide your attention, okay? So um, we can go to the next slide. I, yes, okay. So quick analogy. I like to say that the mind is like a glass of water. So when you're born, and babies are pure and happy and innocent, right? They easily experience happiness in their life. The water is clear. So if I take a rose and I put it behind this glass of water, you could easily feel the happiness around you. You could easily see the beauty of the rose. But what happens is as we get older and we undergo stresses, failures, competition, medical school, doctorate degree, whatever it is, and maybe we didn't learn to clean the glass every day, it gets a little muddy, right? And not only that, you're constantly stirring it around. It's like a tornado. But actually, when we come to be in the present moment and take a break, <laughs> meditate, it's, it's actually so easy. Sometimes I'm embarrassed to talk about it. You actually just do nothing at all. <laughs> you just put the glass down. I have a flat surface here, but if I put this glass down and just let it be, whatever it is, then the mud will slowly sink to the bottom, right? You can go to the next slide. And you can feel the clarity and happiness again. You can see the problems in your life. You can see the causes of the problems in your life. 
And maybe after understanding the true nature of the reality of your mind and the world around you, you can take some steps to do something about it. So we can go to the next slide. And I'll talk very briefly about um, the mind before we do a little guided meditation. Meditation, it's like, it's like you're, um, you're ex we're expats, right? <laughs> Essentially, me too, from another country. And they're like, ah, oh, this is what somtham tastes like. And they, they talk about it a whole book, you know, a whole hour. It just, it's spicy, there's like some papaya in it, but you, you still can't get it. But if you just eat it, <laughs> okay, that's very spicy. I know what that's like, right? <laughs> so meditation is the same. It's experiential. We do need to understand how the mind works, though, so that we can conceptually understand, and this will help us in our practice. So the mind is kind of like a monkey. He's kind of cute, right? <laughs> so the monkey is naturally jumping around from branch to branch. People are like, Nina, I, I can't meditate because I have lots of thoughts. And I'm like, no, 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 you have lots of thoughts because you're alive. It's a beautiful thing to be alive. If you sat down and you had no thoughts, you might be like a cat or something. I, I'm sure they're very peaceful. They look very, very sabai, right? <laughs> but if you had a monkey, how would you make the monkey sit still? So you can, what, what, what did you say? Shoot it. <laughs> That is very one wet one method. Very good. Thank you for your answer. Any any other answers besides shooting the monkey? <laughs> okay, I like this one. Your name, sir? Anthony. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Anthony. Yes, give it a banana, right? If you give the monkey a banana, it's gonna sit still and happily eat the banana. Just like me, I was at this beautiful buffet a moment ago. Give me a little chocolate muffin. I I'm very happy. I don't care about anything. <laughs> So the same thing with your mind and meditation. The different techniques of mindfulness and meditation are simply different tools that match with the nature of different people's personalities. Whatever tool you use that makes you feel more sabai and comfortable. Meditation is easy. It's so easy. Don't make it challenging. It's so simple. If it makes you feel more sabai, it's right for you at that moment. It doesn't have to be the same for each person. The most common technique or mindfulness tool, monkey, a banana for the monkey, is the breath. So right now, you might notice your breath. We all have the breath, everyone's breathing, I hope. You can just notice the rise and fall of your chest, just observing the chair that you're sitting in, how does it feel. See if you can breathe deeply into your stomach. So the anatomical center of gravity is the turning point of our breath. It's the center of our body. It's the most balanced place to be, just like a turtle. Our body is like a turtle. The safest place to be is inside. If I was trying to balance this phone on my hand and I place it on the side, it would just fall, right? But if I place it at the center, it would be still. The same with our minds. We don't need to even know where the center or where you feel home and cozy is. It's just a feeling, you just go there, and the mind will, it has a natural wisdom. If you just let go of the ropes and forces pulling you in so many different directions, family, friends, everything, just take a little vacation or break. Let, put everything aside for just a little time to love yourself. The mind will naturally come back home to the most relaxed place. Just like you have a dog, and if you put a soft cushion next to the dog, you don't need to teach the dog to sit on the bed. <laughs> The dog will sit on the bed on its own. <laughs> we just let go. We just chill, so by so by, relax. The mind will come back by itself. But the techniques are there because the mind has thoughts, and we're not necessarily used to observing neutrally without reacting. So again, just like that awareness test, we're gonna. You can take all the thoughts and use an object of meditation, a mindfulness tool. So you can use your breath if you like that feel center, you can feel like the whole universe is your center. You're already there. And you're gonna do a bicep curl for your mind. When the mind wanders, you gently bring it back each time until the monkey seemingly sits still, it's relaxed on its own. And the mind is like a river of thoughts. So you're on one side of maybe stress and worries. Just pick a boat. If you like a tugboat, get on a tugboat. If you like a yacht, get on a yacht. Once you reach the other side, you feel sabai, relaxed. You don't want to use the method anymore. Let the method go. The end result of all of the methods are the same. 
stillness of the mind, which does not mean you have no thoughts, but again, like the previous definition, you're non-judgingly and non-reactively okay with whatever's going on, just observing like clouds passing through the sky, like you're looking at the scenery, at the ocean here in Padilla, the boats are just coming and going, not paying too much attention. My teacher likes to say that if you're sitting there relaxed on the beach, <laughs> this is the attitude for meditation, and a bird flies over your head, if you're relaxed on the beach, you don't care, you let go, it doesn't matter. But I know a bird flew over my head. I can't stop a bird from flying over my head, but I can stop a bird from making a nest on my head. What does that mean? If the bird flies over my head and I'm like, oh, where is it going? Is it a girl or a boy? I've created a nest. And we do that all day, these storylines and story patterns, similar every day. But when we realize that, we can breathe and come back to our center. We can exit that storyline, whatever it is. Some of them are very negative and even life-threatening. It'll just fade away, and you'll just be with your neutral object. So I'm going to guide you today with my voice um, and myself, because I was able to come. <laughs> uh, and we'll just do a very brief mindfulness meditation. And by any chance, who has meditated before with a show of hands? Awesome. OK, wonderful. <laughs> and who's new to mindfulness or meditation? OK, beautiful, beautiful. Actually, every session should be the first one, like a child's mind, no expectations, not trying to want to experience from the past. So um, you're all perfectly in the right spot today. And so I'll guide you with my voice. And um, I think, is there, I believe we can go to the next slide <laughs> for the practice. It won't be too long. So again, I'll guide you with my voice into relaxing the body and mind. And there'll be a silent period for you to be sabai and observe. Use the mindfulness tool of your choice. Maybe you know how to meditate. Maybe you like visualization, which is the feeling. The mind is a feeling. Like you're on the beach and you feel the bright, warm sun. And you simply feel that sun wherever it's most sabai. In front of you, inside you, around you. And the mind wanders, gently bring it back, or a cool and calming moon, or a bright star. Or you can use a mantra. Transcendental meditation relies heavily on a mantra because the mind wanders in thoughts, pictures, feelings, and words. Different tools to capture the nature of different personality types. If you like to listen to a song and it's catchy, clear and bright, something like relax and comfortable, I will guide you so you don't need to worry. So the first thing is to actually be relaxed in your body. <laughs> So if you want, you can stand up for a moment and stretch, or you can just stretch in your seat. <laughs> if you're already starting to meditate, no worries. Do what makes you feel comfortable. Yeah, we can uh, do some neck rolls, or you can even take your shoes off, feel very sabai. You can even turn the lights off if you like, whatever, you, whatever the team wants to do. <laughs> so we begin to settle down in the present moment taking a little break for ourselves. This is the time to love yourself. You give so much love to the world. And now, to love yourself. Making sure that you are sitting in the most comfortable position for yourself. Maybe your feet are flat on the floor. Your back is upright, but comfortable. Your hands, maybe palms upwards in your lap to open up your lungs, or in the center of your lap. Whatever feels sabai, just go there. You might like to keep your eyes open for a moment, or you can soften your gaze, allowing your eyelids to gently float downwards, almost as if you are about to fall asleep, taking a deep breath in, long and deep to your center, and exhaling away all of the stress and tension from your day. Breathing in the refreshing 
and clean, pure air all around you. And exhaling away all of the cares and worries from your mind. Gently in and relaxingly out. And just breathing into the present moment, letting go of the past and letting go of the future and just breathing into the here and now. Taking a few slow, deep breaths on your own. Relax. And as you breathe, you may like to imagine that you are resting, taking a vacation for your mind, any place that you love to be in. So you can imagine yourself there, just taking a break in your own private corner, your own private space, just able to let loose and let go of the outside world, beginning to relax every part of your body like a stream of relaxation that washes over you from the top of your head, trickling down, gently cleansing and purifying every part of your body, relaxing the top of your head, relaxing your forehead, your eyebrows, relaxing all of the muscles around your eyes, loosening the muscles at the side of your eyes, relaxing your cheeks and allowing your jaw to be loose and slack. Relaxing your neck and your shoulders. Letting go of any tension that may be there. As if the weight of the world has been lifted feeling lighter and lighter and free from all attachments. Relaxing your arms, trunk, and your stomach. Releasing and letting go. Allowing every part of your body to feel comfortable and natural, very loose, at ease, and relaxed, just letting go 
a little bit more and more. Relax. And let go. Allowing your mind to be vast, open, and spacious, as if you are resting or lying down weightlessly in the center of a wide and vast open field with a clear blue sky extending outward all around you into the horizon the limitless horizon and all above you, vast and spacious blue sky, so light, transparent, crystal clear, like a soap bubble floating in the center space. Allowing your mind to settle down on its own without any effort at all. Let it be. And let it flow. Naturally. And at ease. Clear and bright. Clear and bright. Clear and bright. Clear. And bright. Imagining a bright light, the light of peace and purity shining at the center of your being, a very special light. 
wherever this light touches, it illuminates all darkness from people's minds, illuminates all darkness from people's lives, instantly making people feel happier, at peace, and fill with loving kindness. Spreads your light like the bright sun that shines forth in all directions. From the center, expanding outwards, wider, and wider, out to touch and cover and heal your entire body as if you are sitting in a bright sphere of loving kindness, making a wish for yourself to be happy and healthy and able to find true peace in your life. And then allow your peace energy to flow freely out to touch and cover and uplift every person in our peace family today and their family. May everyone be happy and healthy and able to find true peace in their life. If there is anyone suffering in body or in mind, may your loving kindness touch them and ease their pain. And just allow your well wishes and your peace energy to flow freely from the center throughout this whole building, city and state. Allow your loving kindness to flow and purify this whole entire world as if the whole world was shining brightly in your center. May everyone in this world, all beings and animals, be happy and healthy and able to find true peace in their life, just lightening up and brightening up this whole universe with your light of peace and your loving kindness for a moment. extend a special gratitude to the volunteers and organizers and everyone who made today possible and especially yourself for taking time out to love yourself and thus care for the world with your own well-being first. Softly and gently 
Rest in your mind in the center of relaxation and inner peace. Slowly bring your awareness slowly back to the surface. Slowly reconnecting with your physical senses. Feeling the atmosphere around you. Taking a deep breath in, long and deep to your center. And exhaling away, letting go. Taking a few slow, deep breaths. Maybe you'd like to continue with your eyes closed. That's perfectly all right. You can slowly stretch your hands and feet. Slowly coming back to the surface. And remember not to judge your experience today, but just be grateful to yourself, to the organizers, for doing something good for yourself today. Maybe we can go to the next slide. I'll end with a little video. Or this is actually the reason why I'm here, <laughs> is to invite you to uh, two seminars that we're putting on for all of you. Um, for free, we just would like the world to be a brighter and happier place, starting from you, loving yourself and finding inner peace. Uh, we can go to the next slide. There will be, I'm a student, <laughs> like you, uh, two events at Sayam at Sayam Design Hotel Patia. And on the next slide, you can see it'll be in the Dolphin Meeting Room. Both of them will be on the next slide, December the 18th and January the 8th. You can sign up on the QR code here from 9 to 11.30, it'll be a guest panel of, there'll be a physician and a teaching, a teaching monk, um, beautiful teaching monk, and then one of the co-founders. Um, you can go to the, to the next slide and please feel free to join us. Okay, we'll end with the video. I'm not sure if this sounds. จะได้อะไรถ้าเขาทำแบบนี้ทุกวันเขาจะไม่ได้อะไรเลยไม่ได้รวยขึ้นไม่ได้ออกทีวีไม่มีใครรู้จักไม่ได้มีชื่อเสียงที่มากขึ้นเพราะสิ่งที่เขาได้คือได้แค่ความรู้สึกได้เห็นความสุขได้เข้าใจได้ความรักได้ในสิ่งที่เงินซื้อไม่ได้ได้โลกที่สวยงามกว่าเดิมเ
ในชีวิตคุณอะไรคือสิ่งที่คุณต้องการมากที่สุดไทยประกันชีวิตเชื่อในความดี Thailand has the best commercials <laughs> even one of my favorite commercials um, yes please keep loving yourself um, I'm really you can go to the next slide if you like very honored to meet all of you you're a very special group making the world a better place by coming together and supporting each other if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together right and uh, it's so beautiful to see a flourishing community support each other in every which way through your efforts and the love and again the things that money can't buy which is contentment inner peace self-love and generosity um, so please keep giving to yourself and loving yourself and we're here to help you along the way um, on behalf of I retreat the founder Medang Lumpy Duke and Kun Anthony it was a great pleasure and honor to be with you all today thank you I'll turn it back over to Dr. Ren <laughs> if you have any questions you can feel free to ask Q&A. Yes, sir. Thank you for a very illustrating medita illustrated meditation and talk. Could you discuss one aspect which I always have challenges on? One is exhaling and inhaling during meditation. You have a challenge focusing on that? Uh, I just feel wh what is the, the calmest way to deal with that side of it, because it's, a, it's, it's the gasoline, I guess. Okay, very good question. Thank you for your question, sir. So actually, it's just one tool. Many people, it's the easiest tool, because we all have a breath, and it has like a natural rhythm, and we can observe it. So all of the techniques, you want to adapt it to what feels most abide to you. So some people like to feel the you know, rise and fall of the breath. Some people keep their attention at the nostril, maybe even up here. And so the mind has levels of peacefulness. So again, the technique is a tool. And at the end of the day, you let go of the tool. So the, at the end, it's going to be still. So if you're following your breath up and down, you do what feels most sabai. You start with whatever you feel sabai. And again, if actually, if you don't even, some people don't even like the breath. I have some friends with asthma, and they say when they focus on their breath, it makes them feel more anxious. So I give them visualization, just feeling centered. You don't have to use the breath. It's just one tool. But it's the easiest one, because we all have it. So how do you use it? You simply use it in the way that feels most sabai. So maybe you like to follow the whole breath, or just feel the ending point, the turning point, or just follow where the breath goes in and out of your nostril. That's fine. And as you meditate, you'll notice you, you don't want to, if you keep going up and down, the actually the breath gets more shallow as we become more relaxed and the parasympathetic nervous system switches on. So if you keep following the breath, you, you're going to at one point, oh, it's, it's getting more shallow, it's going away. So actually you let go. So you might just, you follow it in and out and then you just feel the rise and fall of your stomach and then just like dissipates away. Because if your breath gets more shallow and it goes away and you're like, oh, where's the breath? And you go back, you're going backwards. Your, art, your mind is already getting more subtle and more refined, if that makes sense. I think this was a little bit more of a deeper answer to your question, but I hope that makes sense, sir. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Um, I noticed some people on your slide sitting down and others in the lotus position. What about lying down? Is that uh, th at night, what I like to do is lie down and kind of stare at the ceiling and then just let go. But I am lying down. And I tend to then go to a very peaceful sleep. I don't know if that's meditation or if that's going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very good point, sir. Actually, yes, the line is very consciousness and, and sleep. There's a very fine line. Actually, when you reach that balance, 50-50, relaxation and mindfulness, it's the best meditation. Because you, like when you actually, would, right when you wake up, before you start your day, don't pick up your phone yet, just sit up and breathe. Okay, you opened your eyes, you got two gifts. Just meditate for a moment. The mind is already calm. Before you go to bed, just like what you did, it's perfect. Breathe to close all the apps on the phone so then you can power it off well. Because some people, they can't sleep because the apps are open and then they close their eyes, but they're, it doesn't, doesn't close. So you let go, relax, perfect. 
you can do lying down meditation, absolutely. Meditation is ultimately you do need to uh, maintain consciousness. So if you can, it's a little bit more challenging. It usually induces you to fall asleep pretty quickly. But actually sometimes myself, if I have a really stressed, stressful day, I just lie down for like 10 minutes. And then when I feel good, maybe I take a quick nap, stand, sit up and meditate. Because when you're finding the center or it, it helps to have an alert kind of relaxed posture, but both are fine, sir. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Yes, sir. Hi. Um, thank you very much. Um, I have I have a couple of questions. When during the guided meditation, I was actually listening very carefully to your voice, and I noticed that there was a particular pattern to it, almost like a wave. The length was consistent. the The pitches of the tones were consistent. The volume was consistent, and it repeated over and over again. Um, so, I, uh, my questions are one. How long did it take you to do that and be consistent doing that? And two, how does that relate to the human brain and meditation? Because the, uh, the temple and the pattern, there's got to be a connection there somehow. Yes, sir. Excellent question. So there are brain waves. Alpha is when we're awake and alert. We're thinking, um, maybe I, because I let go, I just meditated. And then uh, I think beta is when you're, your eyes are closed and you're relaxed. Theta is kind of like this deep meditation state. So actually, Everything comes from your own practice. I didn't necessarily like train that, but it's just like I meditated for many years and I struggled a lot, had a lot of challenges and learned to find the inner peace within. So actually when I guide, I just meditate and I just speak from my center. Somehow there's a source of energy within you when you let go. The center is like a limitless source of pure energy. And when you rest there, it's like the waves of energy come out and I feel like it just comes out in my voice and it may be that when you meditate and that energy will help to balance the waves to a more meditative or calm and peaceful state more easily. And I just, you know, in the beginning I was like really anxious and I was not like that. But you know, after you keep doing things like with practice, like meditation, you ride a bike, you fall off, you get back up, you keep going. Then it kind of gets more consistent. I hope that answers your question, sir. You said you had more? <laughs> or you can ask after. So basically, I just meditate with you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, I have a question about your life trajectory now. I, I read in the um, uh, announcement that you were based in the United States, I think, but now you're in Chiang Mai. So have you moved to Thailand? Uh, what's the story? Oh, that's a good question. He's getting personal here. <laughs> Yeah, he wanted more. <laughs> so I'm a psychiatrist, right? But, and I help people and I teach them, you know, maybe I observe and give them some advice about how to live their life. Like a soccer player, you're on the field and you're playing, but you can't see the field clearly. But if someone is observing from the stands, you can see clearly. Everything has a solution. What is the way out? But myself, do I even really know how to heal and take care of myself? How is my own meditation? So I felt like I needed to let my job go for a while. <laughs> so I actually took a one-year contract here to basically be a staff and volunteer at iRetreat to learn how to truly find peace within myself and heal myself. And as a byproduct of what I can do, then that is the only way that I can help others. So if I truly want to help the world, I have to change myself. So I came here to change myself. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. And who's glad she came here today? Thank you. So don't go, don't go. Uh, so these are the two dates. It's only, what, two and a half hours out of your day. So who, who's interested in, it's a free, it's free. Your favorite word in Patia, free, okay? My favorite word. So uh, definitely get online, book in. I'm gonna go and do, uh, I'm, I'll be there at one of them for sure. So are you going to be I'll there? Be, I'll be this one of the speakers on the 8th. But the, my teachers, they are much better than me. They will be there. So don't miss. They are amazing. <laughs> I am a student. So you never know what you're going to get at the expat club, right? do you? I'd love to say that uh, next m month we're going to get a crude pantomime, but we're not, unfortunately. <laughs>
But what we do have is a, just a small token of our vast appreciation, a certificate of appreciation for your wonderful talk and guided meditation. <laughs> and just a quick question. Uh, the type of psychiatry that, that you practice. So psychiatry, so you're a medical doctor as well. Yes, sir, child and, and adult. So, you know, if you want to see somebody that can pr prescribe, you know, Xanax for you, this is the woman. And I'll give you meditation <laughs> first, though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, was it cognitive behavioral therapy? Is that the primary? CBT, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, and anyway, uh, thanks again. It was a wonderful, not just a